All right, so we're going to take a look at triple integrals in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. We're asked to find the volume of the region bounded below by the cone z equals square root of x squared plus y squared and above by the sphere z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So we're first going to graph the region and we'll use GeoGebra for that. So just put in the equations we have for the cone z equals square root x squared plus y squared cone and in the sphere z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared sphere there get this ice cream um, shape. And uh, we want to think of the graph is having kind of a top and bottom. So when we go to uh, setting up that first inner integral, um, that'll integrate from a surface below to a surface above. And here it appears, uh, I guess we were told the cone is the bottom, right? So it bounded below by the cone. And you can see that it's the bottom of the surface. And then that sphere is the top. So we get that ice cream cone shape. So we grab a little screenshot, and then you can include that. All right, and then you want to see if you're going to be using another coordinate system, or are you going to switch to cylindrical or spherical coordinates? And uh, you can be familiar with the shapes and surfaces and whether they convert better to one coordinate system or the other, um, or you can use the equations that are there to convert um, to see which would work better. Um, looking at the cone, I think the cone works in either one, cylindrical or spherical, um, but with the sphere, obviously that works better in spherical coordinates. So we're going to use spherical coordinates, and so we'll be using that bottom set of formulas. And do we want to go ahead and convert our surface equations. So starting with um, uh, converting that, we would put in the spherical equations here. So Z is rho cosine B. And then x is rho sine phi cosine beta, and that's squared. And y is rho sine phi sine beta, also squared. And then you can simplify the right side, uh, factoring the common factor rho squared sine squared, and then cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta would just go to one. And then you have the square root of rho squared sine squared phi. Uh, and so that just gives you rho, right? And that was equal to rho 
cosine. So dividing by rho cos. Get one equals tangent. So phi equal to pi over four uh, will give us that code. Right, where just let theta take on all values and then rho take on all values. Um, and this will give you that shape. All right, so that's pretty simple. Um, how about the sphere? So the sphere equation, z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, and so there on the right side, we can use, if that's just rho, rho squared, sorry. Um, and then the z on the left would be rho cosine. And then what I do is subtract rho squared. And then we could factor. And then you get two solutions that rho equals zero, which would be like your probably lower limit integration. Um, oh, this is a, uh, and then cosine zero, then you get rho equals cosine. So when we do the rho integration, we'll go from zero to cosine theta. And, and so you don't see theta come up with either of these. So in general, theta is going to go from zero to two pi. if it's not included in these equations. Um, and any other limits, I guess, we'll get when we go to set this up. All right, so then we go on and set up the, oh, it says write inequalities. So we're on step three, write inequalities for the coordinates. So we have uh, phi here equal to pi over four. Um, remember it starts, P is, if you look at the like positive z axis, that's equals zero. And then P kind of opens from there. And that that pi over four, that kind of 45 degree azimuthal angle, that's where the cone is. So it's really everything from zero to pi over four. And then, yeah, we saw the row is going to go from zero to cosine d, not theta. And then there's no mention of theta, so theta goes from zero to two pi. All right, so those are our three integrals. And now we're ready to set up the iterated triple integral. So the order for theta and phi doesn't matter, but we do need to do rho first since that depends on one of the other variables. So from zero to cosine phi. And then the we're just finding the volume. So the function we're integrating over the region is just the function one. Um, but remember that for 
spherical coordinates, um, part of the integrand is always rho squared sine phi. So you have that multiplied the same way you have r in the drd theta polar coordinates double integral. You have rho squared sine phi uh, in the d rho d phi d theta triple integral. So always multiplied by rho squared sine phi for these spherical coordinates. Um, here, that's all we have. Uh, and then we'll do phi next. You do theta and phi in any order you want. And that's 0 to pi over 4. And then we'll do theta last. And that's from 0 to 2 pi. All right. So we've got the triple integral set up. We're ready to integrate. And again, we start with the inner integral first. So we'll be integrating with respect to rho to get started here. So let's do that integral. So the integral from zero cosine phi of rho squared sine phi d rho. So rho is the variable of integration. Uh, so this is just rho squared times a constant. So the antiderivative would be one third rho cubed sine phi, zero to cosine phi. Then we substitute the limits of integration. And so we'll get cosine cubed phi. Uh, and then you'll get a, a zero. So for the first integral, we get one third cosine cubed phi sine phi. And now we're ready to do the middle integration with respect to phi. So that goes from zero to pi over four. And it'll have that one third cosine cubed phi. phi, phi. And then the antiderivative here, uh, we have the one third, we would have a, a one fourth cosine to the fourth phi, right? So the derivative of that will be cosine cubed. And then the chain rule will get the sine cubed, but it would be negative. Um, and so you get a negative out here. So let's just make that a negative one over 12. All right, so we get negative one over 12 cosine to the fourth pi over four uh, plus one over 12 cosine to the fourth is zero. So cosine of pi over four is one over root two. Uh, so you raise that to the fourth power, you square it to get one over two and then square it again to get one over four. Uh, and then cosine of zero is one, one to the fourth is one. And so you just get a one over 12 here. So that's negative one over 48 and positive one over 12. Uh, and that should be a one over 16. All right, the last integration respect to theta from zero to two pi 
Uh, and we're integrating one over 16 d theta. So that's number 16 theta from zero to two pi or two pi over 16 minus pi over eight. Now, if this came out negative, we'd want to take the absolute value because it's supposed to be a volume, um, but it comes out positive. So that should be the volume of this shape. Um, and one thing we can do uh, to validate is to differentiate and check those integrations. So think about where we got our antiderivatives right there, we could do a uh, row integration of one third row cubed sine phi. And that should give you row squared sine phi, good. And then here, we'd be doing a theta derivative, oops, t, variables here. Uh, differentiation with respect to phi of negative one over 12 cosine to the phi. All right, so you get four over 12 cosine cubed phi, and then the derivative of the cosine is negative sine phi. Negatives cancel, four over 12 is one over three. checks out. And then the last one, we do a, a theta differentiation of one over 16 theta and get one over 16. So those antiderivatives look good. Um, using technology, we'll check with Python. actually have the code here for us. So we want to define the three variables here, rho, theta, and phi. And then whatever your function is, again, we're just finding volume, so our function is one, but function of variables could go there. Um, and then I have the rho squared sine phi that's built into that integration here. Um, and then we're integrating with respect to rho from zero to cosine phi. That's called I1. And then we take that result and integrate respect to phi from zero to pi over four. That's called I2. And then take that result and integrate theta from zero to two pi. And that's our final result, I3. So pi over eight there. Finally, we can just look at this geometrically and try to get a volume. And for that, let's start with just the cone shape. Right, which is the bottom. Um, volume of a cone should be one third pi r squared h. So you gotta figure out what R and H are for this thing. Based on the graph. So looking at it from another view. Looks like it's going out to one half. 
I mean, you kind of want to know what this equation is where they intersect. Um, so we can do just a substitution to kind of figure that out of setting these equal to each other, except we need Z solved for. So I think you'd need this written as Z minus one squared. Uh, and that should be one and a half. I mean, looking at this, so the, oh, I know what it is. This is one half. So the center of the sphere should be zero, zero, one half, and the radius should also be one half. Because it's going up to one, it's at one half there. Uh, solving that for Z, you get that, right? Well, it's the one half is in front. And then now set that equal to the other equation. And I was thinking we'd be able to get an equation for X and Y that would be kind of simple, but that looks way too complicated. So usually you can, you can combine these two surfaces and get an equation to variables. Um, Again, this z equals one, and this is z equals one half. So h is just one half. And if it's a sphere, then r is one half as well. All right, and if not, then that's a close estimate, so. Back to this, uh, R is one half, H is one half, and we get uh, pi over 24. So that's the bottom half. And for the top half, it's a hemisphere. So find the volume of a sphere, and then divide it by two. Volume of the sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Um, and so to make it a hemisphere, we divide by two, it'll be four over six or two thirds pi r cubed. And r is again one half. Uh, so you get a one over eight. Uh, but with that two, it's just a one over four, so pi over 12. And then you add those two together. And that should be three pi over 24, which is pi over eight. So in this case, we're able to get the exact answer from just using geometric formulas because the shapes here, I mean, it is just half a sphere and a cone that we can find the exact volume of using known formulas.
Um, so when that happens, you say, well, we wouldn't need the triple integral to find that. Yes, but it's a good chance to practice it. And then there's an easy way to validate. Um, if the shapes of the surfaces in the region don't match up with known geometric shapes, just find the closest one you can and use that. Now here we're just finding the volume, but if we were integrating some function other than one over this region, we would need to take this volume and multiply it by average value of the function to get the value, an approximation of the triple integral. But the function's one, so we just multiply by one. All right, so pi over eight, that's our volume, and we are all done with this example of triple integrals and in cylindrical spherical coordinates. Um, next up is center of mass and moment of inertia.